guys. I'm thrilled to be with you guys here tonight. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing a colors training, our colors training, and I'm going to be interviewed tonight by Mr. Richard Dennis. So guys, colors, the one thing, the one thing that if you learn colors, personality studies, this one training can change your life. So let me turn the call over to Mr. Richard Dennis. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, Michael. Uh, you know, let's 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 uh, do basics tonight. Uh, uh, a rundown of the four personality colors and how to spot each one and how they're different and the, the strengths and weaknesses of each. And uh, let, let, let's start there for tonight. Perfect, perfect. Well, let me do this. Let me give you guys a cheat sheet uh, chart, if you will. Take a piece of paper on the very top of your paper, put open. On the very bottom of your paper, put self-contained. In the far left, in the middle, put indirect. In the far right, put direct. Draw a line top to bottom, left to right. You divide that paper into four areas, okay? Now, the top left-hand quadrant, open and indirect, open and indirect. That would be the yellows, 35% of the population's yellow. You know, if you read uh, Florence Littire's information, she would call a yellow a phlegmatic, phlegmatic. So uh, open and indirect, that means they're answering your questions, giving you short answers. That would be the yellow. Now, if they're open like the yellow, but they're giving you more, more, more information, open and direct, Direct is the top right-hand quadrant. So on the paper, you should have open on the top, self-contained on the bottom, far left in the middle, indirect, far right, direct. So we're going to divide that paper into four quadrants. So the yellow is open and indirect. The blue is open and direct, direct. That's the blues. They make up 15% of the population. And the yellows make up 35% of the population. Now, if you're following Florence Littire's information, she would call a blue sanguine, sanguine. Now, here's the great news. If the person is self-contained, feels like you're pushing a wet rope up a hill, you, they cannot be yellow, they can't be blue. So let's say they're self-contained, but they're indirect like the yellow bottom left-hand quadrant would be the greens. The greens make up 35% of the population. And if you follow me, Florence Littire's information, she would call a green a melancholy, melancholy. Uh, the last color, now that's 35% of the population is green. The self-contained direct people, bottom right-hand quadrant, the last one we have is the reds. The reds make up 15% of the population, and they would be, if you follow Florence Littire's information, the caloric, the caloric colors. What's amazing, you know, is every color has certain characteristics. You know, the, uh, the yellow, for an example, you know, there's their favorite songs, you know, are things like, you know, the Mr. Rogers, uh, Don't You Want to Be My Neighbor? You know, they're right-brained. They're very creative. They're big on relationships, and they're the best at using both sides of their brain, their logical and analytical side as well. Animals, if you think about animals with the yellow, you'd think about a koala bear, Bambi, or a turtle. You know, if, if you went driving with a yellow, okay, they're the safest drivers. They never, never break the speed limit. They don't break the law. The, they've got safe driver on their driver's licenses. That's why they created that in Florida for all the yellows. You know, their motto is, let's be friends. Let's be friends. Let's work as a team. Let's work as a team. You know, if you go shopping with the yellow, um, it's an event for them. They love to shop even with no money. You know, their voice, their voice is soft, soft and gentle, soft and gentle. You know, how, uh, here's a good one, Richard. How do you recognize a yellow on the phone? And if you ask them, you know, what do you do for a living? They're going to say things like school teachers, nurses, UN volunteer worker. Uh, they talk in a relaxed tone. They answer all your questions. You know, the strengths of a yellow, strengths of the yellow is they're the best listeners. They're dependable, Richard. They're, the, they're easy to get along with their team players. They're the most patient. They're very, very supportive. And they're nurturing. They're nurturing. You know, just, just that simple. So, you know, if um, the jobs that they're doing, you know, they, they build such strong relationships. For them, it's, they've created a lifetime relationship with friends, and they always work as a team. They always work as a team. If you think about yellows, what are they not like? What are they not like? They don't like pushy, aggressive people. 
They don't like bullies or uh, any kind of animal testing, things like that. And they don't like sudden change. Richard, they, they don't mind change, but they don't like sudden change. It takes them a while to get used to change, okay? So what's most important, other things that are uh, most important, uh, you know, other than money to a, to a yellow, relationships, Richard, spending time, time with their family and friends, buying gifts for them. I didn't say buying gifts for themselves. I said buying gifts for them. You know, the weaknesses of a yellow, uh, they're oversensitive. Richard, they take things personally. They do that and they'll tend to watch things happen. You know, they'll buy into other people's excuses. They'll buy into other people's excuses. You know, and if you ask the yellow, hey, can you see yourself making $5,000, $10,000 a month? Uh, they'll say yes with the team working with me. Show me the system. Show me the system and we can work together. We work together. You know, how do you visually recognize a yellow? Uh, you know, they're, they're always going to wear casual clothes. They're going to have a big smile, soft, soft handshake. They're comfortable. You know, they're comfortable in their skin. They always walk at a slower pace, at a relaxed pace. If you go out to eat with a yellow, they will have whatever you have. They'll eat slow, and they finish last. You know, Richard, if you go into their office setting, you're going to see pictures of family, you know, oceans, animals, flowers, a lot of nature scenes, a lot of nature scenes. Key words that you can hear a yellow say, feel, feel, together, team, family run business, things like that. How, help, how can they help you? How can they help you? That's the yellows. Now, Richard, if we look at the blues, you know, they're the open and direct people. They're 15% of the population. Uh, they are right-brained. They are the most right-brained creatures on the planet. They're very, very creative. They're big on relationships. Actually, they're most right-brained of all the colors. You know, driving, if you go driving with a blue, uh, they're the fastest drivers. They get the most tickets. Matter of fact, driver school was created for the blues. You know, their motto, their motto is to have fun. Let's have a party. Let's have fun. Uh, shopping for, for blue, spontaneous. They always have buyer's remorse. They always have buyer's remorse because they second guess themselves. They always second guess themselves. Their voice, their voice is loud, loud and fast, you know. Uh, now, if you, you know, how do you recognize a blue on the phone, okay? Uh, if you ask them, what do you do for a living? They'll say sales of any kind, entertainment. Uh, they talk faster, louder. They always, always, always answer your questions right now, and then they talk, and they talk, and they talk. Now, blues have got incredible strengths, too, Richard. They're, the, they're excellent promoters. You need something promoted, give it to the blue. They're energetic, enthusiastic, bubbly, motivating, convincing. They're the life of the party. But overall, they're creative. That's what they do. That's what they do. They'll come up with the idea and then work together with some greens and put it all together and make it happen. So it, it, now let's look at a blue, Richard, if they go for a job. You know, they want to have a lot of fun, you know, no matter what that is. They're always going to be in the top sales award. Uh, you know, they're going to say things like the company really appreciates me, really appreciates me. Dislikes, dislikes of a blue, uh, not having fun. You want to really upset a blue, give them too many facts and figures, facts and figures. They don't like being alone. Anything boring, they don't like being sold, Richard. You know, if you ask them, other than money, what's most important to you? Family, fun vacations, travel, cool car. Now, everybody's got strengths, but blues have got weaknesses too. Weaknesses. They're unorganized. They speak. They're generally speaking. They're scattered. They're poor savers. They're poor on follow-up, and they exaggerate. That's their weaknesses. But we always teach people when we're mentoring them to work on their strengths, okay? Uh, and if you ask them, can you see yourself, you see yourself making $5,000, $10,000 a month? They'll always say yes with enthusiasm. Yes, I have before, and I can do it again as long as I have fun doing it. If I just have fun doing it, Richard, you, they're, they're in. Now, how do you visually recognize a blue? 
if you see them in person. First of all, they're going to be stylish. They're going to be flamboyant. They're going to have facial expressions, uh, hand and body movements. They've got a firm, fast handshake, okay? Eating. They're the last ones to order, and they're too busy talking to even look at the menu. Just that simple. You know, their office. If you get into their office setting, you're going to see pictures of family, but there's going to be pictures of awards, top sales, seven months in a row, things like that. Their desk, oh man, it's going to be messy looking. It looks disorganized to you, Richard, but they know where everything is. Don't move anything. Don't move anything. You know, if you get a letter from a blue, they're going to highlight a bunch of stuff. They're going to bold a bunch of words. They're going to have a PS and a PPS and a PPPS. They just want to keep going and going and going. That's a blue. That's a blue. Um, the green. The green. 35% of the population, they're indirect and self-contained. You know, if they had music for them, it would be Jeopardy music. They're left brain. They're so logical and analytical. Logical and analytical. If you go driving with the green, they will have checked all the fluids, the belts, the hoses. They're going to map out the route exactly. It's going to be precise. And they don't change lanes. They're the ones that get in that one lane and they stay there. Their motto, their motto is let's get the facts and the figures. Facts and figures. If you go shopping with the green, they're going to have all the coupons. They're going to get the best value, save the most money. For them, it's like a hunt. Normally, their voice is soft and polite, soft and polite. You know, now, how do you recognize the green on the phone? How do you do that? Uh, if you ask them, what do you do for a living? They're going to say, well, I'm an engineer, no, I'm an accountant mathematician. They're everything to do with logic and reasoning. They talk very precise. They're thoughtful. They may want the reason you're asking the question. Now, what are the strengths of the green or the melancholy? Number one, most organized. They're great planners. Dependable problem solvers. Task persistent. Follow through. Accurate. Neat and clean. How, uh, if you, uh, how well do they like their job? Uh, they're going to say things like, oh, okay, the company's following my business plan. Uh, the heat index this year has changed all my calculation for the next two-year energy budget, though. The dislikes of a green or a melancholy is pushy people not having the facts and figures, and they cannot stand being late. They will be two hours early rather than two minutes early late. If you ask them, other than money, what's important to you? Listen to this, Greens. Being right. See, they got to be right all the time. But here's a little tip. If your spouse, if you're always right, doesn't that mean that your spouse is always wrong? How's that working for you, Greens? A new Volvo, getting all the kids through college. That's some of their, their things that they focus on. What's the weaknesses of the green? And I know the Greens are saying that's not possible. We don't have any weaknesses, but you do. You overanalyze everything. You're very, very hard to please. You easily get depressed. You spend time with loneliness. Quiet time. It's quiet time. If somebody wrongs you, you will seek revenge. But the biggest thing that Greens have to work on, they're pessimistic about everything. Pessimistic about everything. It's just the way they are. And if you say, can you see yourself making $5,000, $10,000 a month? And they'll say, well, you know, show me the checks in the system, uh, you know, of the people that are making that kind of money. And after I create a spreadsheet showing you the growth potential of the business model, I'll answer you then. I'll answer you then. Now, how do you visually recognize a green or a melancholy? Hmm. Visual, clothes. Um, they're being formal and conservative. They always walk stiff and direct. They have no body gestures. They're restricted, expressionless. They, they're actually good poker players, Richard. Eating. Whatever the specials are, they eat in a structured way. They clean up their plate. They stack the dishes.
in their office, in their office. If you get in their office, there are going to be pictures of corporate home offices. Everything has a place. They have a map on the wall, a globe. They got key, uh, key words that they use. If they're writing a letter or they're talking to you, is, is graphs, charts, my research. Exactly. They qualify, qualify their statements to be logical, logical. So that's the greens. The last color, Richard, is the reds. The reds, the calorics, 15% of the population, you know, they're the direct, they're the direct people and self-contained. Uh, uh, their song would be the Jeffersons, we're moving on up. They are left-brained, logical and analytical, driving. They drive swiftly. Don't get in my way. Mercedes-Benz were built for the Reds. Their motto is, get out of my way now. It's my way or the highway. Shopping. Shopping. You know, Richard, it's always name brands. Designer clothes. Designer automobile. You know, my dog's bigger than your dog. Their voice is forceful. Forceful with volume. You know, now, how do you recognize a red on the phone? Mm. If you ask them, what do you do for a living? They're going to say, oh, I'm the CEO of, uh, of the bank, the bank president. I'm an attorney, military leader. I'm the postmaster. They talk stern, powerful, answer all your questions to the point with no chit-chat. No chit-chat. Strengths. Strengths of the red. They are the best negotiators. They've got lots of energy. They're risk takers. They've got confidence. They're leaders. They take action. They're independent. And, and if you ask them, you know, how well do you like your job? Oh, the company's doing great because they're doing what I told them to do. The dislikes of the red. Losing control. Indecision. Small talk. Crying. See, they see crying as being soft and weak. If you ask them, other than money, what's most important to you? Money. They can have everything with money. See, they see that as power and control. And i, I got to cover the weaknesses, Richard. And I know the Reds that are going to listen to this are saying, this guy's crazy. We don't have any weaknesses. And the number one biggest weakness is they have a massive ego. They're very, very domineering, they're short-tempered, they're unteachable, and they don't get ulcers, they give ulcers. Just that simple. See, in network marketing, they struggle the most because they don't realize this is a volunteer army, and you can't just order people around. It's a volunteer army, guys. Uh, and if you say to them, can you see yourself making $5,000, $10,000 per month? They say, yes, I already do. Is that all that I can make? Show me the big money. Show me the big money. So now how do you visually recognize a red? Okay, they're visually. Okay, they're dressed for success. Brand names, solid colors suggest power. Their handshake is firm and slow. Walking they walk faster. They get there yesterday very, very task-oriented. They smell the roses, but they smelled more roses than you did. Eating. Uh, you know, they stick to what they like. They're the first ones done. They eat fast, and they talk. Now, if you go into their office, they're going to be sitting behind a big desk in a big chair that they sit behind. Uh, in front of there, there's going to be a smaller chair. It looks kind of like theirs, but it's a way smaller chair. There's going to be no family pictures in sight unless it's a, the spouse put it there. There's going to be all kinds of awards and trophies on, on things that they've earned and won, things like that. Key words, key words. They are to the point. No feelings in a letter unless they're mad. Many words are abbreviated. Uh, many words are abbreviated. So when you get just those four quadrants figured out. You know, Richard, we do calls on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday evening where we call clients live and interactive where we talk to people. 
and we identify these colors. If you will listen to this call, if you'll get the color CD, if you'll get the powerful networking secrets and you just learn this piece of the puzzle, it can absolutely change your life for the better. You're going to understand your children better. You're going to understand your spouse better. You're going to understand your boss better. You're going to understand yourself better when you understand colors. What do you think, Richard? <laughs> good, good evaluation. Okay, so, so uh, who do you want on your network marketing team? Okay, great question. You want to mix and match every one of the colors. You want all of them, hands down, okay? But you never let a green do the presentation because they took three times to learn the comp plan, and they're going to sit down and explain the comp plan till you eat the entire elephant in one meal. Don't do that. So when you sponsor greens, have them do the training on Saturday about the comp plan. Okay, don't let them do your your presentation. Let the blue do the presentation or the red do the pet presentation. During the presentation, the yellow is going to be getting everybody seated. They're going to be the ones that make sure they've got refreshments and donuts or cookies. And, and the blues are going to be sitting on the front row. Uh, the greens are going to be on the back row with their arms crossed. Uh, things like that. So you, you, if you've got a presentation, you, you definitely want all of them working together. Now, when you sponsor a red into the business, they're not going to nurture their people. So as they sponsor them, they just sign them in and they're done with them. You need to be real good about nurturing those relationships. Maybe get the yellows working with those people so they don't all quit. Because the red will just sponsor everybody. Everybody. And everybody quits. You know, I asked a, a network marketing industry giant one time. I said uh, to him, we were on a cruise, and I said, hey, I said, uh, how many people that you sponsored in the business are still with you today? He said, none of them. He said, they all quit. <laughs> I thought, wow, he's honest. Told me the truth. Absolutely. None of them are still there. It doesn't matter to them. They just keep sponsoring more, sponsoring more, sponsoring more. So, yeah, you want, some, you want reds because they can sponsor everybody, but you better get somebody working with those people to keep them in. Keep them coached, trained, mentored. Keep them in. Coached, trained, mentored. Things like that. Uh, the blues are the best promoters. So get them to promote the event. Get them to speak at the event. Uh, they're going to get the most people there. Okay? Just that simple. So know what your color personalities are best at, and don't make the yellow get up in front of a crowd of people and do a presentation. Don't do it to them. They won't like it. They won't like it. Don't uh, try to shove them out of their comfort zone because they don't want to get out of their comfort zone, and they shouldn't have to. If you're an intelligent leader, you're going to get those yellows to work within their strengths. My gosh, you're the best, they are the best relationship builders. They're the ones that are going to find out everything about everybody and help everybody get along with everybody. So that's what they're good at. Not doing a presentation in front of a room of 150 uh, people. Let the blue do that. Let the red do that. Let the greens do all the training. So Richard, you want a mix of every one of the colors on your team. Can you imagine if you had four or five reds all on one team down one leg? It, it'd be horrible. <laughs> it'd be horrible. But what if you mixed some yellows in there to work with some of the people that the reds are bringing in? How about you have some blues with them that are going to be the life of the party and get people to laugh a little bit? My gosh, I mean, life is, is meant to be lived and loved. And get them to do that. Get them to do that. You know, the green is going to get all the information and get it all laid out for you in a perfect format, so let them do that. That's what they love to do. Let them do that. And again, let the greens do the in-depth training on your compensation plan or your product ingredient that was scraped off the side of the mole on the volcano every other full moon. If you feel necessary to train people on that, have a green do that. They love doing it. They love doing it.
And one thing, guys, if I could leave you guys with one thing, all the greens, I want you to get this one. It is so, so important for you to be right. Doesn't that mean everybody else you meet and you deal with in life are wrong? You guys always got to be right. So if you want to change your life, don't make people feel like you're right all the time and that makes them wrong all the time. It doesn't matter who won the ball game. The football game doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the, the, the length of the yard to the mile to the... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what time the sun rises or the sun sets in another part of the world. It doesn't really matter. So don't worry about that stuff. Start living life and loving life. Let other people be right for a while. Change your life. Change your life. Richard, we're at the bottom of the hour, man. Yes, we are. Uh, anything you wanted to add to tie this one up? Well, you know, Richard, if, if people would just take a little bit of time and learn the basics of the colors, they can identify the personalities so quickly it is the one thing that we have learned and taught in our organization that helped us grow by leaps and bounds. I saw bonus checks double and triple in 30, 60, and 90 days when we started teaching color personalities to my team. It was incredible. Because, see, greens just want all the information so don't try to sell them don't try to get them to make a decision tonight you will drive them so far away from you you'll never talk to them again don't talk to the yellows about the money the money the money that's not their hot point talk to them about creating a, a shelter for the animals and you can create some additional income to fund the shelter for the for the wounded animals talk to them about that do that with them. Do that with them. You know, the blues, man, if you start explaining a compensation plan to a blue and you think they got to know all that to get going, you're wrong. They learn. They launch and learn. They don't need all the information up front. So stop trying to deluge them in information. Cover them up. Don't cover them up with training on compensation plans or anything else. Anything else. Don't do that. Don't do that. And Reds, stop ordering people around. They don't have to come to the event with the shirt and tie. They don't need a dark t uh, suit, white shirt, red tie, and a Rolex, fake Rolex watch. They don't need that. Just let people be people. Let people love life, live life, and you can absolutely have a blast. And I can promise you, you will not die with your music still in you. That is Michael and Linda's wish for everybody that plugs into our training, the Mentor for Free Training. That you live your life to the fullest with intention and just don't die with your music still in you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, yeah, thank you, Michael. I, there was one thing I wanted to add. Uh, you know, when, when you and I first started working together back in 2004, uh, in order to get a feel for what you were doing, I interviewed oh, two dozen or so of the people who were in your group. And it was mm -hmm. really interesting to me because without my prompting, uh, the one thing all two dozen had in common was a success story about the, the colors training, the personalities, how it had changed their, their personal life or their business life. And as I say, I, I did no prompting on that. They all volunteered them. So uh, yep. there, there's just hardly anything in life that can make as much difference as, as this training can. Uh, yes, sir. Anyway, uh, thanks, thanks very much, Michael. I appreciate appreciate uh, your insight on the colors and, and certainly all I've learned from you over the years on this. I appreciate everybody being on the phone tonight. I uh, hope you guys got a, a great value out of this, and we will talk to you in the next call. Good night, everybody.